Walter Rodney was born in Georgetown, Guyana on March 23, 1942. He came from a working class family of five sons. His father Edward was a tailor and his mother Pauline was a streamstress. They were both supporters of the PPP. According to his older brother, Lawrence Edward Rodney, Walter was a bright boy at school and got a scholarship to Queens College, the top male high school in the country. There, he excelled academically and earned a reputation as an outstanding debater. In 1960, Walter graduated first in his class and won an open scholarship to the University College of the West Indies, as it was then known as Mona, Jamaica. He entered the history department and graduated with first class honors in 1963. Rodney then attended the School of Oriental and African Studies, a constituent college of the University of London, where at age 24, he received his PhD with honors in African history. His thesis, A History of the Upper Guinea Coast, was later published by Oxford University Press. As a student in Jamaica, Walter maintained his reputation as an outstanding debater. Besides, he participated in discussion circles. When Walter was in London, his brother Lawrence was also there. He testified that they both spoke at Hyde Park and attended meetings at the West Indies Student Center. Besides, they attended Pan-African type events. In 1965, when Walter was in London, he participated in a symposium on Guyana. It was during that period that he came in contact with a prominent West Indian intellectual and political analyst, C.L.R. James, and became one of his devoted students. Walter was multilingual. He learned Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Swahili in order to facilitate his research for his doctoral thesis. The teaching appointment which Walter first accepted was in Tanzania before returning to Jamaica and to the University of the West Indies in 1968 as a lecturer in the history department. In Jamaica, Rodney combined his scholarship with activism and became a voice for the underrepresented and the disenfranchised. He became particularly close to the Rastafarians and the Jamaican masses to whom he took his message of black power, black liberation, and black consciousness. He shared his knowledge of African history with them and his speeches and lectures to those groups were published as Groundings with My Brothers. It became a piece of literature critical to the Caribbean black power movement. Rodney's activities had by then attracted the attention of the Jamaican government, then headed by Prime Minister Hugh Scherer. And after attending the Black Writers' Conference in Montreal, Canada in 1968, Rodney was banned from re-entering Jamaica. That decision attracted considerable publicity in Jamaica and beyond. It sparked widespread riots and revolts in Kingston on October 6, 1968, in what came to be known as the Rodney Riots. Having been expelled from Jamaica, Walter returned to Tanzania. There, he lectured from 1968 to 1974 and continued his groundings in Tanzania and other parts of Southern Africa. He became deeply involved in the African liberation struggles of that era, and that influenced his second major work and his best known, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. It was published in London in 1972 and has been translated into many languages. Notwithstanding the pressures in the last year of his life, Rodney managed to complete four books, including an academic work, A History of the Guyanese Working People, 1881 to 1905, A Political Call to Action, People's Power, No Dictator, and two children's books, Kofi Badu, Out of Africa, and Lakshmi, Out of India. Other books written by Rodney include Masses in Action, 1966, The Imperial Partition of Africa, 1970, the Question of Disengagement from Imperialism, 1971, Tanzanian Ujima and self Scientific Socialism, 1972, The African Revolution, 1972, Marxism in Africa, 1975, Class Contradictions in Tanzania, 1975, International Class Struggle in Africa, the Caribbean and America, 1975. In 1974, Walter Rodney returned to Guyana to take up an appointment as Professor of History at the University of Guyana. The academic board had appointed him, but the university council, described by Yusukwayana as a political body, rescinded that appointment. According to the testimony of Yusukwayana, the whole country was looking forward to Dr. Walter Rodney even before he set foot in Guyana. From the time he was banned from Jamaica and came to the notice of the public as a son abroad, 
he was a very popular force in the imagination and hearts of the Guyanese people. Mr. Guyana, in the course of his testimony, recalled a meeting at Middle and Cumming Street and that when Dr. Jagan was talking, the assault began. Mr. Guyana explained that Dr. Jagan speaking in Georgetown was not a welcome thing for the rival party. In Mr. Guyana's words, there was a legitimacy war between the PPP and the PNC as to who was the rightful ruler of Guyana. So the PNC ruling at that time, with a two-thirds majority, could not allow certain people to speak to the citizens of Georgetown. That was part of his analysis of the political situation in Guyana. Mr. Quayana described the meeting as massive, and he added that nothing like it had been seen since the 1950s when the popular United People's Progressive Party, before the split, won the election hands down. The public meetings were described as large, multiracial, and energetic. That was, said Mr. Quayana, an experienced spectacle that had died since 1955. The protest in support of Dr. Rodney was not only domestic, but according to Mr. Quayana, it came from all around the post-colonial world. He referred to a letter from Professor Ali Mizri, a Kenyan scholar of great eminence, sent to the ambassador of Guyana in Washington, D.C., to be transmitted to the government of Guyana, pleading that, to paraphrase Mr. Quayana, they do not make the mistake of shutting out a person with the qualities of Dr. Rodney from the educational institutions of the government of Guyana. He appealed not to let the gentleman become just another exile somewhere in the so-called metropolis. Subsequent to his return to Guyana, Rodney spent much time educating the masses in public meetings, which he saw as a forum for both education as well as agitation. He also spoke at smaller groups, which were attended by WPA members, supporters, and others not restricted to those living in Georgetown. He was invited to give lectures at the University of Guyana at the request of the University of Guyana Workers' Union. He later extended those classes to bauxite workers in the communities of McKinsey, Kokwani, and Everton. Additionally, additionally, he held history classes at his home. On July 11, 1978, the Office of the General Secretary of the People's National Congress and the Ministry of National Development was destroyed by fire. The next day, a number of WPA members and supporters were detained. Included among them were Dr. Rodney, Dr. Rupna Ryan, and Omowali, prominent activists and intellectuals who were arrested and charged with arson. That heightened the process of public confrontation. That confrontation ushered in the civil rebellion and eventually the death of Rodney on Friday, June 13, 1980, at age 38. Walter was married to Dr. Patricia Rodney and had three children, namely Shaka, his son, Kanini, and Asha, his daughters. Walter did not spend all of his energies in writing, mobilization, and lecturing. He was a rounded man, according to his wife, Patricia, who was good with his hands and built all the bookshelves in his house. He was very involved, too, in the life of his children and took them to school most mornings and alternated with his wife in picking them up on evenings. He even insisted on combing the girls' hair, which, according to his wife, he could not do. In fact, on the very evening of his death, Rodney had earlier attended an event at one of his daughter's schools. Every Friday evening, he had a meeting with his children and reviewed with them their schoolwork and inquired how they were getting on. According to Patricia, he took the children everywhere and they ended up frequently at the archives. Whenever convenient, so to do, he took them with him on his visits to Linden. On the morning of June 13, 1980, he took the children to school and returned home where he and his wife discussed a recent invitation for him to work at the university in Zimbabwe. He had in the past ignored many such invitations from other universities. On this occasion, he was particularly keen and actually decided to go to Zimbabwe. Later the evening, he was dead. That seems explainable on several bases. To begin with, he had recently lost a close fellow activist. He was aware too of the stresses being felt by his in-laws who were subjected to frequent police visits and searches. In addition, he felt it necessary for the children's education to be pursued in an environment more conducive to learning. The dangers of the society were not at all lost on him, and in the past he had brushed them aside because he felt he had a commitment to continue the work he was doing in terms of building the solidarity between the races in Guyana, and that took precedence. The immediate reaction of the Catholic Church to Rodney's death was to call for Guyanese to refuse to what Father Andrew Morrison in his book, Justice, the Struggle for Democracy in Guyana, 1952 to 1992, at page 152 called, 
the option of counter-violence and to proclaim by word and deed their opposition to violence. Many stirring tributes were paid to Rodney on the day of his interment, and the celebrated Barbadian author and friend of Rodney, George Lamy, in paying tribute, declared, Today we meet in a dangerous land, and the most dangerous of times. The danger may be that the supreme authority, the supervising conscience of this nation, has ceased to be amenable to any requirement of ordinary human decency. Of Rodney's death, Burnham echoed a different note and had this to say, sad as I am at his inglorious end, I know that somewhere therein there is bound to be a lesson for the misguided others. Miss Karen D'Souza was not a member of the WPA, but was sympathetic to their cause and followed up on their meetings. She was friendly too with many in the leadership of the WPA. She testified that the funeral of Rodney was an astonishing display of racial solidarity and defiance. The defiance was explained on the premise that it was made known that to attend Rodney's funeral was to risk losing one's job. She also described the funeral procession which moved from along the East Coast into the city as the most massive display of racial solidarity in the recent history of Guyana with over 30,000 in attendance. A large number of persons came from many parts of the world, not all of whom were allowed to enter the country, according to the evidence of UC Quayana. Distribution of nursery rhyme. The early hours of the morning following the death of Dr. Rodney, they were distributed in the yard outside of his house and in the streets of Georgetown, what appears to be a nursery rhyme. It was simple, entitled to Walter. And it was significant that it appeared at a time when the details of his death were not fully known. The text is as follows. To Walter, Hickory Dickory Dock, appointment at eight o'clock. We wouldn't need no bail, and this walkie-talkie start talk. Rockaby Rodney now lives in the past, dispatched to his master so quick and so fast. Was never the intention that his fiendish invention would choose his own lap for the blast. That was the text of a pamphlet that began circulating on the streets of Georgetown early in the morning of Saturday, June 14, 1980. The lines parody the children's nonsense rhyme, Hickory Dickory. The rhyme contains details of Rodney's death, such as its suddenness, which resulted from the walkie-talkie, and which at the time was located on his lap. The words, to rock by Walter, appear to be a reference to the lullaby, rock a baby, which is well known and deals with people falling from great heights, often to their deaths. Nursery rhymes, though often seen as solely for the entertainment of children, oft times have hidden meanings. They can be important records of historical events or propaganda pieces. It seems likely that the rhyme was intended to send a message of terror to those whom Burnham referred to in his comment on Rodney's death as the misguided others. It would appear too that it was intended to deflect suspicion from other persons and support the thesis of an accident which was wholly attributable to Rodney. End of chapter two. The COI report concluded that Walter Rodney's death was an act of violence for political purposes, an act of state terrorism. In taking the life of Walter Rodney, the government of Guyana violated its own constitution, which states that no person shall be deprived of his life intentionally, save an execution of the sentence of a court in respect of an offense under the laws of Guyana of which he has been convicted. The Walter Rodney Foundation issued a petition online asking the government of Guyana that it officially release the COI report, proceed with implementing its recommendations, change the manner of death on the death certificate of Walter Rodney from death by misadventure to murder, change the profession on the death certificate of Walter Rodney from unemployed to historian professor, overturn the conviction of Donald Rodney and expunge any criminal history.